microphone check one two one two welcome to the rich live show we're about to get started go ahead and share the link all right Good evening, good evening, and welcome to the Rich Live Show. I'm Rich, and we're live. I like that beat. I hope y'all like that beat. I made that beat. I made that beat. Shout out to everybody that's logged in. I want to say happy Tuesday evening to you. Welcome to the Rich Live Show. I'm Rich, and we're live. And we are having a really, really amazing conversation today. Today topic, today's topic down a little bit today's topic is about uh basically power outage and superpower i'm gonna put that on the screen put that on the screen so today that's this is what is on my heart y'all wonder where i come where i come with these topics and these titles is i do a lot of coaching i do a lot of conversations and have a lot of uh talk with people including myself I speak to myself and I say self you're not perfect don't try to be but you do have power right every now and then we have um, what we call power outage right that's what I I recognize uh, what a power outage is all of us understand at some point what a power outage is um, so we're going to speak about superpower right so once we get our power back uh, and get supercharged after this conversation, then it, there, there will no longer be a power outage. So let's dive into the conversation. But I want to do the first thing first, which is I want to greet everyone. How you doing, Ronnie? Thanks for moderating the chat and holding it down each and every day that the personalities are here. So we appreciate you and all that you're doing. Uh, that cat, Dave, great workout. We got some some great things coming to that cat. Dave show that cat Dave is doing some amazing stuff and some some great results and I see y'all turning up the heat a little bit over there and yeah, working out with you man that's that's a good thing I love it I love it keep doing what you do um, good evening Miss Freeman uh, Veronica and also um, Miss Inez uh, everyone and the three amigos uh, somebody need to text Silver Fox I don't see her in the chat so how you doing, music, and um, everyone else? The whole uh, JC management, Mason and uh, Dave. Hello to you guys in the DMV. Uh, Marie, good to see you. Uh, Marie, always a pleasure. Good to see you, Desiree, and uh, also who else we got in here? I just hopefully I got everybody. But hey, I love a crowd. I love a crowd. So please share the link. And let them know that Rich Live is on the radio. He's dropping nuggets on Nugget Tuesday. And uh, you're going to see a whole lot of stuff coming from me in the near future. So with that being said, I'm going to jump right into this conversation. And um, let's get down to it. Let's get down to it. Put a one in the chat room. If you can hear me and see me, okay, put a one in the chat room. I don't want to waste this conversation at all. Put a one in the chat room. Um, so I want to dialogue. I want to have a conversation with you guys. Hopefully, maybe you guys can call in and speak about this. So today I wanted to speak about power outage, power outage. Well, Rich, what do you mean about power outage, right? So as we journey through life, uh, we go through issues and trauma. And a lot of times trauma starts in our childhood. And um, sometimes we carry it over and then we experience more trauma more situations and circumstances, more things. And, and like I said on the previous show, that um, as you live and as things progress in your life, you, you begin to turn down all the admiration, all the ambition, all the desires, and all the things that you want to do with your, your life. Um, you start to say, wait a minute, it may not be that easy. Let me taper this thing down a little bit. Um, hey, how you doing, Mom? So we want to 
dive right into the power outage. What do you mean by power outage? It's basically at some point in, in your lives, and I don't know where each and every one of you are in your life, but you're going to be able to determine where you are in this conversation. Every now and then, you get to a point where you have a power outage, and a power outage is basically my way and my definition is that at some point the the fire in you and the desire in you begin to burn out and uh, lose its charge and lose the desire to do the things that you want to do in your life for you and often the older the older you get the less power you have and when i say less power i'm not speaking in terms of strength i'm speaking in terms of grit i'm speaking in terms of uh, of desire and drive so what happens is at some point you experience a, a power outage because of all the things that happen and and as i said very earlier in this conversation is that most trauma is experienced for the first time in your childhood rather it's some level of the abuse or some things were said to you some things were done to you you experienced or witnessed something and that's when you began to understand the power the power that's in you or the power that can be taken away from you and most often in your childhood um, trauma takes away power and as you get older you understand the power of trauma so you begin to turn down your power inadvertently inadvertently you start turning yourself down so we want to get back to the power that we have because at some point you're going to have a power surge you hear the term burnout you hear the term i'm fed up i'm tired i just can't take it no more i'm done i'm just i'm just when you start hearing the words i'm just that means that at some point there's been a power surge, at some point there's been a power outage, there's been a short circuit or a lost, some level of loss uh, in desire or drive. And we're speaking in terms of, of drive when we speak about power outage. We're, we're talking about the self drive that you had from your youth. And at some point it either went out, burned out, or you turned it off or down. And I am speaking to someone right now that needs to hear this. So I'm going to dive right in. But first of all, let me give you my disclaimer. I am not certified. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a clinician. I'm not a mental health specialist. I'm not even a counselor, right? But I'm Rich Live. I'm a guy who has a whole lot of knowledge and experience and life experience. And I speak to people and I coach people. So a lot of this information is coming from real life sources and real life conversations. Hopefully you can use this information, pass it on to a friend, invite a friend in. But if not, you know, you don't have to hold on to it. So let me dive right into it. Women, I'm going to start with you. Power outages. What I have noticed in my experience when dealing with women, most often the power outage starts very young when you begin to notice, notice the surge. There's a lot of ambition, and then we, you, you grow up believing that a, your purpose is what has been taught to you and what has been told. So a lot of women tend to shape their lives around the experiences that been pawned off on them on this is what you should do this is how you should serve this is how you should relate to life this is how you should be a wife so then women began to shape themselves for the future the husbands the help meets right so we begin to shape ourselves for an individual we have yet to to meet so we're governing there we're governing ourselves based on something that does not exist with hopes that this thing or this person in my future will exist. And then along the line, you, we, we we're going to experience some childhood trauma. And you know what that looks like. You know who you are. I don't know your story, but I'm just basically saying that women typically experience that early in life, childhood trauma, while they're trying to pursue what they have been taught to pursue and how they should be shaped and this is when the power is being taken away because despite what their belief system is somehow or another they've been governed to be a certain way 
that might not necessarily coincide with their psyche. So there's a struggle that ensues between what you want and what people say you should be. Right. So. All right. Where are you going with this, Richard? Well, I told you I wasn't certified, but I'm going to keep going. So what I believe happens at some point in relationships, in relationships, and I'm going to get to the fellows after this, in relationships, um, women begin to focus on the responsibilities that has been embedded in them from early childhood and teenagehood and early adulthood. So then the focus becomes less about you and more about who you've been taught to serve or how you've been taught to 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 pursue your future. Right. So it's, it's often in, in the beginning of serious relationships that women begin to give the power away. And sometimes it's undeserving of who you share your power with. And then just keep in mind, you know, there's also those things that occur in your life, in your past. And then you're still trying to be this super person. And, and, and between all this, this, this chaos that you may have experienced in your life, you're trying to be that super person, that super woman that you believe that you ought to be for someone that may or may not be deserving of your power. And then there are times when so much is going on and you're you're being held responsible for so many things and so many people and so many situations and then there's a power outage because you short circuit it and a lot of times we short circuit when there's a overwhelming experience of something that that happens on an acute level that causes us to sh we say shut down i say it causes a power outage Sometimes the light comes back on and it may not be as dim. Sometimes the power comes on, but it's not as powerful. And then you begin to manage the you. And when I'm speaking about power, I'm talking about what's inside of you, right? Somehow, after giving away our power, it's hard to take it back. So you, from my experience, after speaking with women that have been divorced or have broken away from the powerlessness, uh, it's when they become so invigorating, invigorated with life that they realize how much power they had and surprised that they've had it all this time. Just never turned it on, never turned it back on. So. I want this conversation to be more about how to turn that power on if you've experienced a power outage. Getting back to the, the fellas. Getting back to the fellas, the gentlemen. Us too, as well as, as, as women, we were groomed to be a certain way. And I'm not saying it's a negative thing because I, I, I love the way I was raised. But I'm basically saying that we were groomed at some point to believe that we should be uh, powerful. Sometimes we were taught to, to not cry, to not express yourselves, to, to man up, right? To, to experience all these powerful things and be the powerful of women, right? So that causes us as men to suffer in silence. And then that too, trying to be the powerful person, the one that shows no pain, the one that shows no hurt, the one that that's so prideful that he he would he would be so prideful that he would harm himself before he allow you to see his pain. So that's the other side of it, right? So at some point that causes him to lose his power. He 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 short circuits and then he has a power outage. So you see how the both at some point you 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 mismanage the power that you have and then through his trauma he begins to lose more and more and more power. So what happens is, in my opinion, is that it becomes the, the battle of the strengths and the powers. And instead of supplementing each other and building together in relationships, we begin to pull from each other's power source. I'm going to say that again. At some point, we begin to pull from each other's power source. 
And at some point, if you're being pulled by a job, you're being pulled by your child, you're being pulled by your relationship, you're being pulled at some point, it's like a cord. If you keep pulling that cord, it'll come out the socket. Therefore, you're losing all of your power. Therefore, you're losing all of your power. So if you keep pulling on a cord, if you keep pulling on a cord, at some point, you will end up out of the outlet, causing a power outage. <laughs> so there's probably no one that's on this chat line that has not experienced at some point a power outage. Everyone at some point has experienced a power outage. Yep. I'm a firm believer that we were all born with superpowers and we all have and possess superpower. At some point, that power began to turn itself down or off. It's called a burnout because expectations have been set too high for you. And then you turn around and set those same expectations high for yourself. And then when it becomes unobtainable and life doesn't unfold the way you desire it to unfold, clumped in with all the pain and the hurt and the disappointment that you may have went through, it, it leaves you sometimes powerless. And when I say powerless, I'm not talking about strength as in like physical strength. I'm talking about the emotional well-being, the, the, the psychological well-being, the mental side of it. You know, um, and a lot of times in, in women, power sometimes goes off because of a, a man not being complimented or someone saying something mean or doing something mean or something that you don't deserve, even though you may stand up straight and you may look him in the eye and have a diverse opinion, somehow or another, what was said cannot be unheard. What was done cannot be undid, which sometimes render you powerless, causing you to lose your power. So you're born with superpower and you begin to lose a little bit more electricity as you, you go through life woes. Well, the conversation today is a good thing because I'm going to help you get your power back. That's why I put this on the screen. Power. I'm going to help you get your power back. This conversation is about how we're going to get our power back. Uh, both men and women at some point. Trauma turns power off. Trauma shuts power off. It dims light. It dims rainbow glows, right? So what happens is we typically hide behind the person that's closest to us when we turn our power off. That could be a spouse. It could be a boyfriend, girlfriend. It could be a, a sibling. It could be your kids. So your kids are in college or they're, they're young adults or whatever the case is. And you put all your energy in your children because they see you as powerful. But you know that you've power surged. But if you hide behind your kids and you hide behind your ill or elderly parents or you hide behind your job, you hide behind your circumstances, you hide behind something that would allow you to hide from the power having to be turned on. So you can blame circumstances and situations and outcomes and things that have happened in your past, in your childhood. It allows you to keep that switch off. So the world doesn't really get an understanding of how much power you have. And then you allow yourself to be let off the hook because you don't have to turn your power on. Well, the conversation changes today because we're going to get our power back. How about that? Let's get our power back. I got you. I got the keys to the power. 
So put a one in the chat room because I don't want to be speaking to myself. I want to make sure that y'all tracking because this is a really good conversation. We're going to help you get your power back. We spoke about how we end up losing this power, but let's have a conversation on how to get this power back. So that's why I keep putting the word power on the screen because I want you to pay attention to what's going on. You are born with superpower. And as you progress through life, um, triumph, tragedy, trauma, pain, and loss, each time those things happen to you, you turn you down. And at some point, you find something to hide behind, which doesn't hold you accountable for exercising your power. You don't have to turn that switch on. You leave that basement light off. You leave that closet light off because it, with the light off, it, you don't have to see who you really are. Who you really are. Right? So the, the, the cool thing about what we're talking about is that I don't care where you are in your life right now, in your present place, you can take back your power. You can take back your power. The best way to take back your power is to acknowledge when and where it was taken from you. When did you notice the rainbow glow started to dim? When did you notice that you started to turn yourself down? When did you notice that you were unplugged? When did you notice? Who did that to you? Who caused that? See, when we address that, I like that, Ms. Jenkins. Put, a, put power in the chat room. Let's talk about that. Put power in the chat room. So at what point, this is how we get our power back. At some point, you have to be willing to embrace what caused you to unplug yourself or who unplugged you or what situation or what circumstance caused you to turn off. When we identify that pain point, We can navigate through the rest of the life better, but we just have to identify what caused us to lose our power, period. See, because now, see what happened. Let's, let's say you were a child, you were a young lady, and, and, and there's, there's some abuse that may have occurred. There's something that may have occurred. Maybe there was some bullying, or maybe there was some trauma or loss or divorce in your, in your parents. Whatever it was that may occur in your life, See, this is what, if I was a counselor, this is what I would tell you, is that although you were too young to deal with the trauma when it occurred, and it's not your fault that it occurred to you, as a healthy, intellectual, thriving adult, you're prepared and equipped to go back as the adult that you are to deal with what occurred when you were a young person. This is powerful. So what happens is sometimes we, what occurred in our childhood, we carry that luggage to adulthood and we don't realize that we have the power, the knowledge, the resources to go back to when you were 12, 13, 14, 15, whenever it occurred. 20, 19, 21, you have the power now to go back and mitigate mentally and forgive that person, forgive yourself, and move on and get your power back. Something calls us to unplug, and we haven't figured out what it is. But here's the thing. A lot of times you're unplugged in your youth, not just childhood, early adulthood. Recently, maybe something happened. Recently, what caused you to unplug yourself? What caused you to go off and then figure out where it is? It's just like if you're ironing or cooking or doing something using the hot curl iron, fellas using the shaver, and it's plugged in, when it comes out the socket, what is the first thing you do? You plug it back. So I'm going to encourage everybody to go back to that point where you were unplugged 
and plug yourself back in and get your power back. Oftentimes, we relinquish our power unnecessarily. And if you didn't have a choice with your power at the time, you have a choice with your power right now. We often take relationships and we, we render power to people. We give our power to people we're in relationships with. And then we learn to love what they love, leaving us powerless. And we teach ourselves to find happiness in them having our power. Ooh, that's dysfunctional. Women are the best at this. Women are so much like a chameleon they have adapted to dysfunction so well to the point that they will give all their power to undeserving people and celebrate them and remain powerless. Take your power back. We were all born with it. There's enough in each one of us that we don't have to give it away to each other. Think about it. You pay one light bill but you got stuff plugged up all around your house and it's running your home. You can wash, you can, you can cook, right? You can iron, you got your lights, your television, everything's running off of the same power source coming into your home. So why do you have to give up your power to anybody else? It's enough. Get your power back. Get your power back. I love it. I love it. So at the end of this conversation, I want us to recharge and replug ourselves back up. But in order to do that, it might be a little discomfort, which means that we have to identify where it all started, where it came from, what outlet did it come out of, and plug it back in and deal with it. And once you deal with it, you're dealing with it not as the person that was a victim. You're dealing with it as a person that's a victor. Because now you have the experience, the knowledge, and the resources to reset. To turn the breaker back on. To get your power back. Being powerful, ladies and gentlemen, is the best attraction that a person can have. Being powerless puts you in a situation to be used and abused and under appreciate it I'm saying get your power back and it's not as difficult as you think because you're thinking back to the pain that you were in when it was taken from you and I'm saying that you're far more equipped to deal with that today than you were when it occurred so to move forward in life Identify those things that cause you to be unplugged. Go back to that socket, plug yourself back in, and identify your superpower. So then we're going to move on, and we're going to talk about, we're going to speak about understanding how to utilize your superpower. First, you have to identify it, right? So it says understanding and utilizing your superpower is critical for achieving success and living a fulfilled life. It's critical critical right so understanding and using your superpower because your power is that thing that you have that you don't have to have an education to receive it's that thing that you have that you don't need anything else to supplement who you are or what it is about you you just have it it's that thing and when you use it it, it really help you identify your purpose in life when you use your superpower, you live a very unfulfilled life when you don't reconcile with your superpower, right? So I'm going to put that back on the screen. Y'all can screenshot this. Hey, Tiffany. How you doing? Tara and Sharon. Yes, yes, yes. Everybody that joined us. Yes, let's keep this conversation. JC, that's right. Put power in there, Tiffany. One, music. All right, so... Understanding and utilizing your superpower is critical for achieving success and living a fulfilling life, okay? 
So that, that's important. Then I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to the next one. By understanding your power, right? By harnessing your superpower, you are able to contribute to the world, which, which is very fulfilling in your own unique way by making a positive impact on those around you. So why is it important to harness your superpower? I'll put that back up there. Because what it is that you bring to the table and who you are, that power resonates. And people around you, you influence whether you know it or not. They see the power. The young ladies and the young men and your children and people in your community, you don't have to say you're powerful. They could see your power. They could see your superpower. So you have to identify what it is. So I'm going to read it again, then I'm going to go to the next one. By harnessing your superpower, you're able to contribute to the world in your own unique way, in your own unique way, by making a positive impact on those around you. Positive impact on those around you. So that's a sense of responsibility, right? It's not entitlement. It's responsibility. So when you don't do your part, then other people can't reap the benefits. So if you're still unplugged, then there's some young lady, young man, somewhere around you that's not going to plug themselves back in because they think it's okay to be powerless because you are unplugged. Plug yourself in. Get plugged in. Let's get busy. I'm going to go to the next slide. You're also able to use your talents, and this is big. This is big for your desiring entrepreneurs or those who have stories, those who have songs, those who have crafts and gifts that they want to share with the world. This is very important. You're also able to use your talents and passions to pursue a career or pursue activities that align with your values and bring you fulfillment. I'm going to leave that up there. You can screenshot that. I'm going to read it again. You're also able to use your talents and passions to pursue a career or pursue activities that align with your values and bring you fulfillment. So that's a word that I've been hearing throughout this presentation, fulfillment. So getting your superpower helps you, helps you to feel fulfilled. This whole thing called life is is a pursuit of happiness we're always looking for a reason to be happy we're always looking for a reason to be fulfilled where your fulfillment is going to be in you living out your your powers your superpowers what is it that you're doing that you should be what is it that you're not doing that you should be doing what is in your closet that you put away that you should go pick up what lights did you turn off so that you cannot be reminded of where you left off? Turn that light on. Plug yourself back in. Get back to who you are. You're powerful. You're powerful. God did not give you the superpower and these talents and these gifts to turn yourself off. Turn yourself back on. Get back to you. The life that you were given, it was for you. It was for you. Yes. So let me go to this last slide. And then I want to talk to you. And, and I want to find out what you guys think. When you understand your superpower, you're able to identify and leverage. Remember that word, leverage your strengths to achieve your goals and overcome challenges. I'm going to say that again. When you understand your superpower, you are able to identify and leverage your strengths to achieve your goals and overcome challenges. The thing that sticks out to me in that particular statement is overcome challenges. So life gets easier when you go back to, the, back to that point where you were unplugged and your light was dim. When you go back to that point, and then you plug yourself back in. The light comes back on. Now you have the power as a brand new person and you've reset yourself. Now you can overcome any of those negative experiences that you've had. But if you're walking around unplugged, 
the world never gets an opportunity to see who you really are. Matter of fact, the world sometimes responds to you because they know that you're unplugged. Get your power back. Get your power back. If you, if you have a problem going back to that point where you were unplugged, get a coach, speak to someone. You don't have to do it alone. But you're too smart, you're too bright, you're too brilliant to be turned off. Life is too short. Most of us have lived longer than what we're going to live. Let's get our power. Let's get our power. Let's turn it on. Because if we turn it on, it's just like the lights in the house, man. We, everyone benefits from you having your power turned on. Don't give it away. It's for you. There's enough for everyone. So don't feel like you have to empower someone else by turning yourself off. If you're married, you have your own power source. You have your own outlet. You got your own socket. You know, if you're with your mom and, and, and you're with your parents and, and your children, you know, you have children or teenagers or whatever the case is, everyone has their own socket. You don't need to unplug yourself to plug someone else in. You don't have to sacrifice who you are to support you don't have to sacrifice who you are to support. So just remember, just remember that in order to really enjoy the fruits of life, you have to first, I'm going to put it on the screen, recognize that you may have a power outage. You may have a power outage. But the cool thing about it is, guess what? You can get your power back. So at the end of the day, tonight, I would encourage you to think back for a second on where your power is and has it been turned off. And if it's plugged in and if you got power and you keep your power, you may want to tape it to the wall so it don't come out. <laughs> but don't let anybody take your power away. Do not, and most, most women that I have spoken with, um, have in their pursuit of happiness have given their power to their relationships or someone that they felt like needed their power and it made you feel like you were contributing but what you were doing was unplugging yourself and you were sacrificing your purpose your dreams and your visions and you were giving your power away to someone didn't need it because we all have access to the same energy of life. Everyone has what they need. Now, can you help someone? Absolutely. Not at the expense of unplugging yourself. So if you unplug, get charged, plug yourself back in. Because you have superpower. You have a purpose. And until you fulfill that purpose and get into the, um, the habit, of pursuing your purpose and plugging yourself back in, a lot of folks won't receive the benefits because I believe life is like dots being connected that if you don't do your part, then someone won't get the connection that they need from you. Someone, some dot won't be connected because you didn't do your part because your, your light's have been turned off. You have unplugged yourself um, for whatever reason and someone needs that light from you. So plug it back in. Plug yourself back in. Get back to your careers. Get back to your dreams, your goals, your visions. Understand what your purpose is and understand where you gave your power up and go back and get it. Go back and plug it back in. The lights are still on. There's still electricity. As long as you can hear me, as long as you're alive, as long as you have a pulse, as long as you breathe and you have air in your body, there's power in you. Don't waste it. As we speak, someone has literally be, uh, been unplugged from life. As we speaking, someone has taken their last breath. But you have power that you haven't turned on or turned back on. Go turn it back on. Use it until it goes completely out. Use it. So, ask me questions. I want to answer. 
How you doing, Jazz? Put a one. No, you know what? Do me a favor. Write the word power. Because to me, that's a way of just acknowledging that you got your power. And if you if you know someone that may have been unplugged due to a circumstance, a situation, some hurt, some guilt, some pain, some loss, you know what? Help them plug themselves back in. Help them find out how to get plugged back in. Because we all have a purpose. And our purpose is, you know, it's not necessarily to unplug ourselves to plug someone else in. Our purpose is to pursue our purpose, our vision, our dreams, our destiny. Let's get charged, ladies, gentlemen. Get your power back. You can't help anyone else if you're powerless. You cannot, do not dare try to assist rich life and you're unplugged. That's going to drain my energy because I got to figure out why you're not plugged in. You cannot be an asset to anyone, including yourself, if you've been unplugged. Go get your power back. Figure out who unplugged it. What caused it to disengage from the wall socket and put it back in and get back to work? One thing about plugging the socket into the wall and getting your power, it's instant. You start to feel gratifying uh, solution-based feelings when you recharge yourself. Life is about being connected. That's right, Ms. Jenkins. Stay connected. Stay connected. Most of us put our power on the shelf. Most of us put our gifts and our, our talents and our, our attributes to this world. We, we put them away. We put those things away because it reminds us of what caused us to put them away. I'm telling you that you have everything within you. You don't need to purchase anything. You don't need to do any more hair, makeup. You don't need to do anything right now. You have so much power in you that is not being utilized. Stop suppressing your power. You are well equipped to deal with your tomorrow. If you're willing to face what happened yesterday, put it away. Plug yourself back in. Get your power back. It wasn't given to you to give away. Period. Period. Put a one in the chat room. I'm, I'm seeing these powers come in. That's right. <laughs> Life is about being connected. Veronica said power music, sharing. That's what it's about. Hopefully this message was encouraging. Hey, listen, we're going to speak about girls want to have funds. F-U-N-D-Z. F-U-N-D-S. Or F-U-N-D dollar sign with uh, Dr. Marcia and, and her special guest who's going to be on shortly. Um, and that's a great conversation. So we have some wonderful things going on. Um, I'm going to be broadcasting from the restaurant real soon. And uh, we're going to take the whole studio over there and we're going to be eating and conversating. So it's going to be a really good thing. So y'all stay tuned. We got some wonderful things going on. So y'all stay tuned. So with that being said, I'm going to ask you guys to just sit tight for a few minutes and um, we're going to get Dr. Marcel set up and ready to go. Do not go anywhere. All right. We'll be right back. This is, hey, listen, this is a Rich Live production. And hopefully I said something or done something to encourage you to, to get plugged back in. All right. Let me read this comment. Say, remember what and who you meet. You have to accept them for who they are. You can't change anyone. All right. Go ahead and preach, Evelyn. Sharon says one. Ms. Jenkins said one. Veronica. Evelyn says power. One. That's right. That's right. Women are the most powerful human beings or creatures on this planet. I think it's all messed up because men have been in charge. <laughs> so if you want to balance the world, women, get your power back. Not that you lost it, but I know... I know in life, life could be hard 
tough and difficult and challenging, and it, it offers so many different challenges. And sometimes it's just easy just to turn off. I'm telling you that you're well more, you're far more equipped to deal with yesterday's circumstances because you're stronger than you've ever been. You know more than you've ever known. And you can do more than you've ever done at this point in your life. So you have all the resources. So why stay turned off? Turn up. Turn up. That's right. Music, Ronnie, everyone else. Listen, it's going to be a powerful conversation coming up next. I got the one and only Dr. Marcia. Y'all stand by. She will be on in a few shakes. So y'all stand by, all right? It's been a Rich Live production. Know that Rich Live love you. And there's absolutely, absolutely nothing you can do about it. See ya.
Hi, and welcome to the Girl Boss Life Academy. I am Dr. Marcia, and I am your Master Destiny Life Coach. And I specialize in helping women to discover who they are, to decide what they want, and then to deliver on their destiny. But what is a girl boss? And I believe every strong woman is powered by the girl boss inside, who is strong, who is tenacious, who is powerful, but who also needs to be encouraged, who also needs to be supported, and who also needs to be loved. And that's what we do here at the Girl Boss Life Academy. And so we help you to redefine who you are, help you to refocus on your goals, and also helps you to redirect your path so that you get to that destination. I remember when I needed that life coach, the decades upon decades of me not knowing the answers, me not feeling confident to make the decisions I needed to make. And so that is what we do here at Girl Boss Life Academy. I use my transformational coaching method to help you to boss up both in life and in a leadership. For those that are ready, go ahead and click and register to get my free gift to you. And you can also learn more about the coaching program. It's time to boss up both in life and in leadership. Good evening, good evening, and welcome to the Up Sis Up show on the MSE Network. I am Dr. Marcia. I am your host. And this, this, this month, all of June, we are talking about, about money. We're talking about the, the financials. And we're talking about girls just want to have funds. We just, we just want some funds. That's it. If you want to have some funds, put funds in the chat, put buttons in the chat. And so this is up, sis up. This is where we are rising up. This is where we're speaking up. And this is where we are bossing up. And so for the month of June, we are bossing up in our financial health. Okay. This is financial wellness month. And so I want to just poll the room. I want you to poll, poll the room. And I want you to write on a scale from one to 10, how financially healthy are you? Okay, we can talk about cholesterol. We can talk about diabetes, your A1C. We can talk about your blood pressure. We can talk about that thing on the scale that we don't like to look at, but sometimes the money we don't want to look at either. And so I'm bringing some heavy hitters onto this platform, but I want to do a, a self-assessment first. Okay, so from one to 10, 10 being the most, how financially healthy do you think you are? Come on, let's put in the chat. Let's put in the chat. And so while we get started, I'm going to invite my guest on, on this platform. But before I do, I want to read in your hearing just a little bit about her. And so again, this is about girl just want to have funds. This is about your financial health. This is about your bank account. This is about your budgeting. This is about your investments. This is about your money mindset. And I wanted to bring someone on who can help walk it down. And so I have the money makeover mogul in the house. Somebody put money making mogul. Okay. If you can't type all that, just put some M's in the chat. We're talking about some M's. It's talking about the money makeover mogul, but we're going to talk about some, some millions. Okay. Can, can somebody put, some, you know, put some dollar signs in the chat. If you with me, put some dollar signs, because that's what we're talking about tonight. And so I wanted to introduce none other than Dr. Tabitha Russell. She's affectionately known as the money making mogul. Somebody put that in the chat for me. Okay, the money making mogul. And she is a highly sought after keynote speaker. She's a best selling author and she's a financial expert. She is arguably one of the most empowering, entertaining, 
and enthusiastic voices in transformational speaking today. She leverages over 20 years of professional experience in the financial literacy industry. And Dr. Tabitha, she is on a mission to train corporate and collegiate audiences to transform their relationship with their money so that they can unapologetically give themselves permission to experience the financial freedom, stability, independence, and security they deserve. So let's bring Dr. Tab Tabitha to the stage. How are you? Welcome. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for having me on tonight, Dr. Marcia. I am so excited to be here because I have some good stuff to share on tonight. So thank you, thank you, thank you. You are so welcome. So this is called multiplying your millions with the, we can call it the money making or the money makeover mogul. And so I want, I'm going to throw it to you. I want you to tell me what, what that, what's your hashtag? What's, what's, what does that mean to you? So the money makeover mogul has come from 20 years, 20 plus years experience with helping people to take back their financial wealth authority, meaning that I have not come across a situation that we have not been able to work through, meaning you can bounce back from any situation. You can bounce back from foreclosure, repossession, all of that stuff, but you got to put in the work. And so for me, the money makeover mogul comes in that we're going to tear it all the way down and then build it back up because Ooh. I believe that you got to have a solid foundation, right? And then money making, once we build it back up, now we're going to transform it and diversify that portfolio a little bit. All right. She said, tear it down, build mm -hmm. a foundation mm -hmm. and build it back up. That's okay. Right. So. So Dr. Tabitha, when you said tear it down, I, I got a little, I kind of pulled back a little bit. What do you say to, to these girl bosses? Because I'm uh, this is girl boss life. I am, I am your master destiny life coach, and I am the CEO of Girl Boss Life Academy. Yes. But when I talk about the girl bosses, some some people are gonna say, mm, I don't know about that. What do you what do you say to, to those women? Meaning that I really want to get to how you think about your money, what's your relationship with money? And so sometimes we go back to the grassroots. How did you learn about money? And we determine if that was good or if we're still in the learning process and if there's some things that we can tweak in order for us to have a healthy relationship with money. Me, when I started out with this, <clears throat> it was a lot about mindset. And I realized that all of us, we want to go out there and we want to get the money. But I find out that sometimes once we get the money, because we're girl bosses, right? Like some of us are, are driving in the lane, we're doing it, but we don't keep the money all the time. Uh -huh. And so that's where we determine whether or not the habits we have are healthy or not. Okay. So I'm here. Thank you for that. You're saying healthy habits. And it's, it's kind of like, I'm feeling like exercise, right? Eating right, going to the doctor or checking in with your accountant, you know, mm -hmm. keeping a log, doing having a budget. All of those things are healthy money habits that sometimes we don't adopt. And you talked about mindset. And I, I want to go a little bit deeper, but before we do that, I want you, I want you to tell me, you said you have 20 years in financial literacy. Can you walk us down where, where you gained this knowledge in those 20 years? Okay, so for starters, when I graduated high school and I set out on my journey, I went to school and I got a minor in accounting. However, that was not really where I learned my financial literacy. Like I learned some things there. I can, I can keep your books. I can get your books right. Now, <laughs> when it came to practical application, I really learned it through my life experiences, meaning that I've always had an entrepreneurial spirit. So I started off being an entrepreneur early on in life in my twenties. However, 
through that, I've learned a lot of things about how to get it wrong. And through getting it wrong, meaning that I learned that having a budget was super important. I learned that making sure that you know what's in your bank account and what's going out of your bank account is key. And so a lot of times people don't like the B words like budget, like balance, like <laughs> behavioral <laughs> habits, right? So with that, I learned personally just through some of my mistakes, how to get it right. And so for me, it became a passion on teaching people how to avoid some of those things. So that way they don't have to make the mistakes that myself and others have made. You can learn from my mistakes and potentially uh, progress forward a lot quicker than I did. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of my experience came on the fly <laughs> in some cases now, but also um, really positioning myself and investing in myself to sit under the tutelage of some other people as well. And some people that had $100,000 uh, insight, some people had million dollar insight. And now I'm on the search for <laughs> finding somebody that has a multi-million dollar insight on how all of this looks and the structure behind that. So I've been a lifelong learner around financial literacy and really through my experience. Got you. So you're saying you had some on the job training. Very much in, so. this, in this money making mogul world. And so I want to go to the chat again because I asked a question and I'm not sure if I if we if we got the answers. I want to know where you are from one to ten in your financial health. Okay, in your financial wellness, with 10 being the highest, mm -hmm. one being the lowest. I want you to go ahead and put that in the chat because I want I want us to start somewhere. Whenever we're doing an assessment, let's start, let's figure out where we are now. And then we can come back around later and see what change has, has occurred. So I want to go back to the healthy habits. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're talking about multiplying our millions. Mm -hmm. So the first question I have is, first of all, where do we find the millions? Where's, where's, where's all the money right now? So how, how, how do we find those millions? I just have with the so one of the things that I teach in the Breakthrough Millionaire Academy that I am currently the founder and CEO of is that we take whatever you're innately good at, what are you passionate about, and we figure out how we can diversify those talents, meaning that you can get to millions really by doing anything today, but it comes down to having a structure around like building that solid foundation and then diversifying off of that thing. So for example, let's say that we have someone and they're a baker, for example. With that person being a baker, I myself, that is not my strong suit. So I personally will be in line to buy the cakes and the cupcakes, right? Mm -hmm. Not, not mm -hmm. only that, I love to cook. But because I don't like to bake, I may even pay you to show me how to now make the cakes and the cupcakes. So we've just created a second stream of income. Now, let's take it a step further, right? Because not everybody potentially has the resources to be able to pull you into their space to say, teach me how to bake these cakes and cupcakes, but you can put it in a book now and you've just created a third stream of income. So when we talk about getting to the millions, we look at how you can diversify and potentially uh, have multiple sources of income coming in and you can duplicate your process. Now, when you get to this stage, now you hire others to duplicate what it is that you do. And so you create another stream of income. So there are ways creatively that we can get to the millions. Like millions, I believe, is in all of us. And for some of us, depending upon where we're at in our income, we have had millions to come through our bank accounts at some point. So now what are we doing to keep those millions? Yeah, so there's a million, there's millions inside of everybody. If yes. In the chat, 
If you have millions inside of you, I want you to give me some dollar signs. I got some some dollar signs. And I also see, I see Tammy. Hey, Tammy. She put in an 8.5 in her financial wellness. Now, I'm not sure what what, what everybody else is doing. I, I think they, 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 in the, they went to their bank account and started counting up their money. But I want you to go ahead. Go ahead and put a stab. Put, go ahead and put your, your number from one to 10, because we're just, this is a conversation. This is, we're giving power. And uh, Rich rich Live, he talked about taking your power back. Mm-hmm. And we're going to do the same thing here. We're taking back our financial power. We have given it away. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I'm, I'm, I'm going to be transparent. Some days I don't even, I don't want to look. Okay. I don't want to see, but I, but when I do that, I'm giving my power away mm-hmm. because first knowledge and awareness is usually the first step in any, any program, whether we talk in AA, we're talking about financial awareness. We're talking about trying to, you know, get healthy physically is being aware of where you are. So Dr. Tabitha, I want you to pick, pick that ball up. I threw it, I threw it at you. When when you are start when you start working with people in your breakthrough millionaire program, I, I like I like how that says. So can you say that breakthrough millionaire? Breakthrough millionaires academy. Break, yes, breakthrough millionaires. We all need to break through. So t- can you walk us down? Just kind of give us um, a little a little sneak peek of what the program is all about. Yeah. So I like when you said awareness before we can take action. So with awareness, we need to know exactly where our funds are going. And I told you that people don't like the B word. They don't like budgeting. They don't like sometimes getting back to the basics because a budget is is basic, right? Like everybody is teaching how to have a budget in their financial course. However, I like to take on the challenge of helping people to get to a zero balance budget, meaning that if you have a steady stream of income and that income, let's say it comes in from a job every two weeks with that budget, you want to definitely make sure that you account for everything that's coming in and then you account for everything that's going out. A lot of times I find that people miss the little things. Starbucks and stopping at the gas station and getting our, we, we're good sometimes with getting our hair and our nails done, but sometimes adding in that pedicure or going to have a spa day or having lunch with the girls and different things like that. Some of those things we don't account for. And this is where I say that the budget can very easily be busted. And this is how. So say, for example, I had a client And he was a very eager young individual. And he would say, oh my goodness, I got my check and I saved $500. Kudos to you. And that is very exciting. However, I found that this gentleman would go back in that $500 after or before he would get his next check. So after he put it away, Now he would go back and get $50 for some gas. He'll get $20 for, you know, lunch, or he stopped by the store and he'll get another little $40 or whatever. By the time he got paid again and we reassessed his budget, he has now spent $250 out of that $500 that he saved. Now, I would say that did you realistically set up that budget? No, he didn't. His budget right then was was broke because I was saying, okay, we want to get that balance down to zero. Well, he already was off to a somewhat of a little bit of a bad start because you should not put away money and immediately have to go to it. And it's not an emergency or it's not for the intended purpose that you put that money aside. So it was very interesting to see the progression over the course of time when I started teaching him the steps to make sure that his zero balance budget was properly calculated. So the awareness is everything throughout this process. What will work for you? What does not work for you? And if it does not work for you, find out why Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. probe until you get an answer that is suitable. And it's okay to scratch it and start it all over again. That's the good part about the action part of all of this. Yeah. So I'm being transparent. Okay. So we're talking about, and I just going to the chat. 
I heard mm -hmm. Nikki says she's a seven. Okay. Out of 10. And she okay. put in some dollar signs, meaning that there's a millionaire inside of her. Yeah. And I say, hey, to Dr. Tanya T. Wise in the house. Hey, Ronnie. And so I wanted to, um, where was I going with that? Oh, I'm, I'm being transparent. Okay. So we're talking about the whole budgeting thing and mm -hmm. the zero balance budget. I, I understand. <laughs> okay. I have found, and I'm, I'm saying personally, mm -hmm. that doing that is a little, after the first month, it gets a little onerous. It gets a little tough. It gets a mm -hmm. little interesting. How do you, <laughs> how do you coach? How would you coach me on that? Okay. Well, for starters, I would say that thank you, first of all, for being honest with me and letting me know that there's potentially a little bit of a challenge either here now or coming down the road, meaning that uh, you know, I sometimes am over that, <laughs> right? But this is where we establish accountability. That's the other part to all of this. We have the awareness, we have the actions, and we have accountability. So having somebody to hold you accountable to what you say that you want to do, first of all, and then secondly, to the agreement that we both set together. And as we do that, now we're able to reassess why potentially it gets a little old or it gets a little stale. So a budget though is a target and that target should constantly be moving. So that way it's potentially fluid. So I will just say a girl boss life is not set it and forget it. First of all, because there's growth in there. There's sometimes things that come up and I believe that you should reward yourself somewhere throughout this process. So that way it gives you a fuel for the fire so you can keep going. So when that is the case, I will say, all right, Let's reassess the budget and we should do so regularly as things change, as the, the, the dynamics uh, continue to grow in your life, then we continue to reassess it. But a budget is not something that you just set and say, oh, we're just going to stick to it. No, it should be moving constantly as you continue to grow. Okay. So what I'm hearing is that it's a living thing. It's a living organi mm -hmm. organism that can kind of mm -hmm. change and ebb and flow and I also heard that I should have a budget buddy. I should have some type of accountability so that when it's kind of like if I'm going to the gym, to have somebody at the gym to meet me there and to kind of push me when I start to fall off. Yes. And it sounds like that has been maybe something that I have been I have been missing. So I want to check. I want to go to the chat and just to kind of see where I, I'm, I hear action. I see some more dollar signs. Oh, you know, I want to know if you have a budget, if you budget currently, I want you to put a B in the chat. Okay. B in the chat. I have someone else. Melissa Holly, how are you? She says she's a seven out of 10 and she got some it. dollar signs in the chat as, as well. So if you have a, if you do a budget right now, go ahead and, and put a B in, in the chat. So we're talking about breakthrough mil mil millionaires. For those who are just joining, I have my special guest, Dr. Tabitha Russell, she is a, a expert in financial literacy. We're talking about her breakthrough uh, millionaire academy. And so after you have had some, now you set the budget, it's now fluid. We have some awareness. We have some accountability. What else do you think is important in order to get to a place of financial health? So I believe that you should also set a vision plan. And for a lot of us, we may have ideas on how we want life to go for us or how we want to accomplish things. But most of the time, it's only here. And so I believe that when it's only here, it's just a thought. And so once you now write it down and you commit it to paper, I'm, I, I love the Bible as well. So I, I teach a lot of biblical principles, but I believe that Habakkuk two and two tells us to write the vision down. And so now you take it from your thought in your mind, your idea, and then you write it down. So you commit it to paper and now you post it somewhere that everybody in the house and, or either yourself is constantly reminded of that thing that you're wanting to try to accomplish. Because too many times we have thoughts and ideas and we're trying to get it all done ourselves 
where there's others around us that may or may not understand the process that we're going through. Meaning that, you know, it's, it's like when we start budgeting, for example, and we pull the reins back a little bit and you have, we'll say the children there and they're used to, you know, balling out. They're going to get the new shoes that's coming out and they want to go out to dinner and catch the movies with their friends. But when you pull the reins back, you didn't communicate that. And when you didn't communicate that, now there's um, some sort of conflict that's going on, as well as everybody else is in an uproar and they're feeling some kind of way. And now that could potentially throw our mindset off. So we talk about these things on how we can keep a healthy relationship, not just with our money, but also in the family dynamics and how we can keep a healthy mindset going through this process. So all of that is in the academy. Like we keep it real and raw as far as money is concerned, because for a lot of us, we were not taught money. Like money was not a household conversation in my home when I was growing up. Now, when I think about my mother, she's excellent with money. When I say excellent, I mean, oh my goodness. But I did not realize that until I was a grown adult out and on my own, did I realize what all she was doing. I could see it, but I wasn't in on the integral parts of it to where I could understand it and put the pieces together. And so now that I that I see it and I'm, you know, paying bills and creating businesses and doing all these things, it's just like, oh my goodness, it was there all along, oh, but man. not really because we weren't having the conversations. And this is where we have to have open dialogue on what's happening. Yeah. So as you say that example, the thing that I'm reminded of, and I see Deborah Ann Jones in the chat. How are you? So the the analogy that i'm going to say is say your your grandmother or say your mother had this recipe and she made these biscuits they were nice and flaky and everybody loved them she always made them but she never taught you how to do it you, you may even have have seen a recipe she may have said oh yeah put some flour put some sugar put a little bit of yeast put a little bit of this but when you try to do it yourself it just doesn't come out right because she didn't teach you and so I want to segue into money trauma mm -hmm. okay you talked about what we were taught at home mm -hmm. what we've been through I'm going to throw out to you, I'm going to say the good, the bad, and the ugly. I want you to kind of walk us through that in terms of our money mindset and money trauma. Okay. So a lot of times we feel like the good part to all of this is that we can handle it ourselves, that we know uh, what we need to do, how we need to do it, when we need to do it. And a lot of times that is true. However, the bad part of it is, is that do we really do it and do we do it well? And when we get into a place, do we have somebody else now that we can go to to get potentially additional answers or a strategy that could potentially help us to get out of the place where we thought we were on track to be and we weren't? How do we fix that? How do we correct it? So the ugly part sometimes comes down to is that, oh, I don't want them to know that I have a money challenge. Oh, I don't want them to know that I'm over here struggling or anything like that. So I would say sometimes as a culture, we've got to normalize the good, bad, and ugly when it comes to money, meaning that baby I didn't, I don't know everything. And I'll, I'll be quick to admit, I don't know everything. However, I have surrounded myself around those that I could potentially call on and get an answer. I also have a community, a tribe where I can be transparent and they not judge me, but they help me in such a way that it helps me now to be better. And so 
through that process, it helps us now to be fortified and strengthened in such a way that our mindset says that it's okay sometimes if you fall or if you falter, meaning because you've made a mistake, right? Or you didn't calculate something right or whatsoever. And so because sometimes we don't know everything, we've got to constantly be investing in ourselves to learn more and to fortify ourselves on where if something happens, we now uh, or don't have all of our eggs in one basket, first of all. And secondly, that we have uh, resources that we could potentially pull from. And we need to normalize that. We as a culture are not like that. Mm -hmm. And so we don't have all our eggs in the same basket because we have diversified. Yes. We have multiple streams of income, yes. as Dr. Tabitha has already taught us. So I love this. So I want to go to the chat. Uh, Sharon, she asked a question and she says, when do you reward yourself in this Ooh. whole budgeting thing? I love it. I love it. I love it. Every step along the way. So I use yeah. this as an analogy. I say that if you set out to lose weight, for example, and your goal is to lose 50 pounds, and let's say the first month you lose seven to 10 pounds, are you going to wait to reward yourself? Or are you going to reward yourself in such a way that it says, oh, I'm ready to go for the next 10 or the next five to seven pounds, right? So when you're on your financial journey, I tell people this, when you get your paycheck, whether that is every two weeks or whether it is monthly, you should set aside something that says, I earned this for the hard work that I put in. Can you only imagine? And this is where I see a lot of people's budgets go busted. They have a big goal that they set for themselves and they look at the money that they have and they say, wow, I only have enough money to take care of X, Y, Z and the rest of it I need to put away so that I can get to this goal. But they never take anything out for themselves. So they're easily tempted to buy the dress, buy the shoes and break the budget as opposed to adding it into the budget. So whatever your favorite thing is, and if you can only afford 25 uh, $25, $50, $100, whatever it is, you should set aside that amount in the budget to reward yourself. And as you do that, every step along the way, it now makes it like, okay, I'm getting, I'm getting something out of what I'm doing every single day, even though sometimes I may do some things I may not want to do, but the bigger picture is I'm still going to achieve my big goal but my small goals along the way is going to help me to get to the big goal and keep me motivated. So that's what I mean by you should reward yourself. I love that. And so we're, we're talking about uh, the name of this was multiply, multiplying your millions. Mm -hmm. And so we're talking about mathematical properties. Mm -hmm. And so I love what you said, instead of breaking the budget, add to the budget. So let's use a different mathematical property so mm -hmm. that the the budget or the B part that we're afraid of, mm -hmm. and in my head, I'm, 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 I'm hearing boundaries as well. It's a boundary, right. but we are now in this fluid space with it. Add, add that to the budget so that you now don't feel deprived. That's right. Okay. Same way if you're cutting calories. Once you start depriving yourself of the things that you want, now that craving where rears his ugly head and now you are now you cheat and i want you to talk to talk to us about now that we're cheating what that does in the mindset how do, how do you how do you attack that so for most people um, we're our own worst critic. So we're always really hard on ourselves when we start uh, getting outside of the perimeters of what we've drawn for ourselves, or maybe our coach has set for us. So it's very easy to go to a dark place and say, oh my gosh, I messed up like it's the end of the world. However, when that is the case, 
having an accountability partner there or somebody you feel like you can trust and confide in and talking through that process with them helps you now to keep your boundaries healthy. You know what? Today was not a good day. Man, I messed up. I overspent. I whatever. That is not the end of the world. One instance is not necessarily the end of the world. However, you have got to get back to the plan, whatever the plan is that's set. And the reason why I say that your budget, for example, needs to be fluid is that now you put in some safeguards to potentially help you from going back to that place or going outside of your boundary. So if that means that you need to redo that budget and reassess where you are, then that way you account for those triggers. You figure out what your triggers are, and then now you set up a plan of action to attack that. And having that accountability space helps you with being able to now address those on an ongoing basis, real time though, real time. Okay, got it. So um, Daryl in the chat is saying, loving this money topic. And I also saw Nikki. Nikki says that she needs some accountability with her, with this budgeting, with this process. Mm -hmm. So I want to know, Dr. Tabitha, what does that, what does that look like in your program? And how is this different than what can be done? You know, I'm, I'm familiar with the Dave Ramsey mm -hmm. program and they have a zero budget, a zero budget, whatever it's called that. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> and, and so and how, how do we do this um, in a better way in your program? So I, too, am familiar with uh, that program, you know, whatever they do over that side. Um, however, I believe that um, because some of us can identify the challenges that some people are experiencing, for example, I'll use me. At one point in my life, I lost everything. When I say everything, I know what uh, repossession is like. I know what foreclosure is like. I know what it is like to come back from bad credit, all of that stuff, and still have small babies and all of that to contend with. And so having somebody that can identify with what that feels like, we call it the struggle. And I will say, if when you can identify real time what that person is going through, those emotions that they're feeling, the habits that they may be trying to experience, you know, the Robin Peter to pay Paul and things like that. I found that in some of those programs, people cannot identify wholeheartedly what that is like. And so for the Breakthrough Millionaires Academy, we seemingly have like minded individuals in there that can help not just with the practical side of this. The practical side of this is nothing. We can we can talk about budgets. You can go to a book and you can find a budget and different things like that. But what about the emotional side? The emotional side definitely needs to be addressed. That mindset that you have to have when the challenges come, how that looks and the accountability, meaning that we've created a group, a tribe of like-minded individuals that are all potentially at the same place or trying to get to the same place. And so we're able to now encourage one another and potentially share some gems in there that helps them to accelerate their process. So when we talk about accountability, there's a no tolerance policy that we're not going to put anybody down. If it's not empowering, empowering, inspiring, inspiring or encouraging, then uh, it's probably better left unsaid, right? Because that's just an opinion and opinions. Everybody got one, but not necessarily that it should be shared. So we create a loving and wealth mindset environment that is all about the millions and the money. <laughs> mm -hmm. I love it. So I'm going to ask those that are in the chat, go ahead and put your questions for Dr. Tabitha in the chat. We're going to uh, go ahead and answer all the questions that you have. But I have a question for Dr. Tabitha. You mentioned in your bio about the intersection between faith, fortune, and fulfillment. Can you Can you speak to that? Yes. So I had the um, pleasure of writing a book 
it is called Go F Yourself. That's right. It is. <laughs> Go F Yourself. But more importantly, it is Faith, Fortune, and Fulfillment. And this book, I always say that when it comes to our finances, we really have to get good about doing math. And how I break it down is this. Our faith is the addition part of it. When we add God into our lives, that means that we are opening ourselves up to endless possibilities. And then from there, we're going to, um, because we can, once we add God to our lives, right? He's going to subtract from us those things that's not like him. And so we've just learned addition and subtraction. We call that generally a budget. However, on getting to the fortune, now we're going to learn how to divide, meaning that we're going to diversify every part of our lives, meaning that there's time that we're going to spend and there's some times that we're going to save. Either way, you can diversify on either end of that. And then the fulfillment comes in when we learn how to multiply, meaning that we learn how to be good in all things. And so go F yourself is <laughs> finding faith, fortune, and fulfillment, learning how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide, meaning that we are learning how now to be great in our own skin, in our own place that we are. And so whatever uh, area of finances I tell people that they are right now. Don't compare yourself to anybody else. You've got to be authentically you. And we address that. We don't We don't just talk about faith, fortune, and fulfillment, but we also talk about some other areas in here. We talk about the awareness, the importance of strong values. And there is nothing more important than keeping an eye on the prize, meaning that looking at the vision. We talk about uh, fear and overcoming that. There's so many things that we talk about in the book that helps people now to be relational and really figure out where you are and be okay with being where you are and knowing that it's going to get better or you're going to potentially be able to excel and do exceeding abundantly above anything that you can ask or think, meaning exceed uh, or excel past the place that you set out to be your mark to begin with. So yeah, yeah, that's good. So let's go back to the mathematical principles. Yeah. And you said there's some addition, you have to add, add faith. There's some subtraction, the stuff you don't need. You talked about the division, diversify, mm -hmm. and then the multiplying. And that's how you get to the fulfillment. And I'm thinking about just a, a, um, a math problem. And you know how there's some things Mm. If you have all of the num all of the numbers, all the properties, you have addition, you have subtraction, you have some division and multiplication. There is an order in which you have to do the math problem so that you can get the right answer. Yes. I feel like sometimes we're spending when we should be saving. Sometimes we're saving when we should start spending. Right. And we're talking about investing in ourselves or investing in that process, that program, that coaching, whatever that is that we need in order to get to the next level. But there's a process to get there. So we're talking about budgeting. We're talking about accountability. Um, what else would you add as far as the the process? So when I think about the process. I tell everybody that you are the best version of you right now by yourself without any help. And I will say you, the one question that I have to that is that, are you okay with who you are right now? Are you okay with the place that you are in your financial situation? And if the answer is no, then the process then becomes how can you better your situation? And if you've done all that you can do by yourself, now this is the opportunity for you to potentially seek some help. And sometimes that does require that you uh, potentially invest in yourself. Investing in yourself is one of the healthiest things that we can do meaning that you get somebody to help you navigate the process in such a way that now potentially 
it helps you to make sense of all of this stuff. Because if if I'm the best version of me right now, man, please take my money and help me because I've done everything that I know to do. And that's where we've got to get comfortable with doing that. Like a lot of us are very rich with knowledge, but do we uh, practically apply the knowledge that we have? And if that question is no, then now you got to get somewhere and get um, some accountability that's going to help you to align with where it is that you're trying to go. If not, the potential that you could fall back in that place or worse is very real because you're trying to figure it out. And because we don't know everything by ourselves, now surround yourself with uh, some people that know a few things. A little bit of wisdom and knowledge goes a long way. Yeah, that's good. So I'm going to the chat. Nikki, she has a question about saving. Mm -hmm. And actually, there's two questions. One is what percentage should we save? And is there a minimum amount that we should be saving? So there's a rule of thumb that says 50% should go to your household expenses, which is you know, the the house, the car, the incidentals for the house, like groceries, things like that. 30% should go to you having usable cash for whatever that is. Um, meaning that if you have some credit cards and uh, different things like that, you should use that towards that. And then there's the 20%. I always say that 10% goes to ties. That's first and foremost, like you pay it, set it, forget it. Don't think about it. Now that part of it, you can say, yup, you can set it and forget it. Cause that will not, well, it could change when you make more money. However, <laughs> and then the other 10% is savings. That's a good place to start. Now, if you find that some people pay off their cars, some people pay off their homes and different things like that. Now you can afford to diversify a little bit further. If you're okay with leaving your uh, savings at 10%, the extra money that you generate now, you go and you put it somewhere, meaning that you could potentially invest it. You could start to build your business. You could do so many other things. Now you have your money making money for you and you are also um, having it where you um, have diversification in your portfolio. So once you get to the place of where you have, let's say six to eight months of emergency fund set, the rest of the money, now you start to um, allocate it different places where it's making money for you. Mm -hmm. Okay. But 10% so is a good rule of thumb. A rule of what? thumb. 10% is a good 10%, rule of thumb. 10%. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, Nikki, did you hear that? 10%. So the, there's another question in the chat and I'm going to say the word, I'm going to, I'm going to set it up. Okay. I'm going to say the word debt. Mm -hmm. Okay. How do you, one, how do you deal with that? And how, what do you say to someone who feels that weight, that pressure of all the debt that they have? And so it's hard to kind of, you're trying to, Pull yourself out of a hole, but then you start talking about, about saving. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to debt, a lot of times we have to uh, get to the root cause of why we have all the debt. First of all, is it because we have a spending problem? Is it out of necessity? Is it out of uh, sometimes uh, us trying to, you know, be a boss, right? We're, we're talking about, we're talking to girl bosses or bosses in general. However, was it from investing, different things like that? So when you can determine how you arrived at the debt and say, for example, it is not out of necessity. Now, sometimes you have to change the habits that created the debt, meaning that there's different kinds of debt. There's good debt, which is the necessities because we have to have food, clothes, and shelter. But then there's unnecessary things where once you get the clothes, for example, do we have to have 25, 30, 50 dresses? 
or 25, 100 pairs of shoes. Yes, we do. So, well, I like to think so as well, but it's in my budget. So, (laughs) I say it's a necessity. (laughs) Continue. I'm just, that's my little peanut gallery. Go ahead. Yes, it blew me too. And so, when it comes to the debt, though, when you determine how and why, now you can put together a plan to pay it off. And I will say that let's say you cannot afford to save 10% to start with, but you can afford to save 5% or you can afford to save $25. Let me tell you, $25 uh, adds up really fast. And that's like $300 at the end of the year. And so I will say that's 300 more than you had. And so it won't be the same always. And as you pay off the debt, now you can increase your savings to where you can get it to 10% or above. So let your situation be your situation for now, but put together a plan where you're going to come out of that. And that won't always be your story. Mm -hmm. That's good. So Daryl was the one who asked the question and I think we covered it. I'm just going to read, read it the way she wrote it. And we, uh, can you can you tell us the pitfalls with having a savings account versus paying off your debt while maintaining an emergency fund while working on the budget? Oh, that's that's all of it. That encompasses how we should have all of this structured. I even say that we should take it a little bit further when we talked we talked earlier about rewarding ourselves through this mm-hmm. process. Mm-hmm. So with having your normal expenses, I call them the the healthy expenses, the house, car, that kind of stuff. But then you have the emergency fund, you have the savings fund. I say you should include a vacation fund, right? Like why not go somewhere, even if it is potentially saving up and you buy a tent and you staycation in the backyard, whatever it is, you, I mean, your situation has to be your situation, but you stretch it a little bit further. Now, I will say that sometimes it could be a little overwhelming when we are trying to do all of these things because we weren't taught this. And anything new sometimes come with a little bit of challenges, meaning that we, because it's new to us, it automatically seems big and fearful and frightful. But I always say, give it time. And start where it works for you. We want to jump out there and we want to say 50, 30, 20 or 50, 30, 10, 10 from the rip. And that might not be your story. So Mm -hmm. if your story is 60, 20, (laughs) 20, then let that be your story. And you can always go back and reallocate whenever is necessary. But let the main thing be the main thing and start where you are and then launch out and to do something different. Yeah, that's good. Because the analogy that I also hear is when you start Mm -hmm. going to the gym, okay? You've been a couch potato for the last five years. When you get to the gym, you have a pipe dream in your head that you're going to go in there, you're going to run a treadmill and you're going to go do some lifting. You lifted a hundred pounds but that's not how it works, right? You get in there, you might only be able to walk for five minutes. You may only be able to work for 10 minutes. So let's use that same analogy for the money and the budgeting. If you have debt, if you're trying to have a savings account, you're trying to have an emergency fund. What I'm hearing Dr. Tabitha say is start small. Start with that five pound weight. If it's only $5, Put that five dollars aside. It, it may be that Starbucks run that you may have to do without. But three hundred dollars at the end of the year is better than zero savings. And let the time build up to now. You can have more. You can go do the the, the 50, 30, 10, 10, or there's some of the you know some of the other um, strategies that she's implementing. Would you agree? I wholeheartedly agree. There are so many tools out there. We'll use the um, 52-week plan. There's a plan out there. You can look at it, look it up online. It's called the 52-week savings plan, where you literally start off with saving a dollar. 
Really? And then you go from saving a dollar up to like a hundred dollars or something like that. By the end of the year, you have thirteen hundred and fifty two dollars, if I'm not mistaken. There's another one you could do five hundred, five thousand. There's all kind of different formulations out there. But sometimes it's creating a habit of doing something that's going to get you to that place. Just like we were talking about the gym. If five minutes is all that you can do, then do those five minutes. Do it with joy. Do it with a smile on your face, with a good attitude, and then go back the next day. And the next time that you go back now, you're like, okay, I can do this. Now I can go six minutes. And you feel good about being able to do that. So with your money, it's the same way. We've got to break the habits of why we weren't able to be able to save the money to begin with. And sometimes it is um, a learned behavior, just like anything else. And so Mm -hmm. as you acquire these skills, learn some new tactics and habits, create some new habits, now it becomes a little bit easier. And so you're not used to, taking that Starbucks money and going to run down there to go get a coffee. Now you're used to putting it in the coffee can and reward yourself for saying, oh, okay, I got this. Now mm-hmm. I can increase it and do a little bit more. And so it does help you to learn some new things and to build some great habits. Yeah. So I want to offer a challenge. Okay. To the viewers. I'm, I'm, I want to do the 52 week challenge. Okay. So I want you to share more. I I want whoever, if you're willing to do, to start off with the dollar, is that a dollar a week? It it will be, it it breaks down the formula, but it starts off with um, the dollar per day and dollar per day. Okay. Then it will challenge you to increase that and different things like that. So we would basically, in order to do the 50 week, 52 week challenge, we would basically probably only cut that in half. So maybe it's a 26 week challenge, but wherever it, it is in the, in the year, since it's halfway through the year now, you pick up from there and you go to the end of the year. So with that being said, it's still attainable, but maybe instead of starting where they are in the plan, you just start from the beginning. So yeah, I agree that you can start with a dollar. Okay. And then you go from so a dollar a yeah. day. And so we're creating mm-hmm. habits. Mm -hmm. So we're changing. It's kind of like you're going to start, you know, going to the gym. You're going to start meditating. You're going to start reading your scripture. You're going to start doing that. When you do them every day, it now becomes a habit after, you know, depending on which who you listen to. It can be a 90 day challenge. It can be or 90 day time in order to create that habit. So I'm going to I said I'm putting the habit out. I'm going to do the for the rest of the year. I'm going to physically put aside that whatever dollar, dollar a day for, for the next, um, for the rest of the rest of the the year. If you're in the chat and you're going to come with me, I want you to put challenge accepted. Okay. We can do it electronically as well, but I like to feel, I like to see the money. I like to put it in the thing and I like to look at it after a while. So that's, that's what we're going to do. So put challenge accepted. If you're going to decide that you're going to put away some money every day, as we build this savings thing and it gets you better, gets you closer to your financial health. So what I wanted to do, Dr. Tabitha, is, and I don't know if there are any more questions in the chat. I wanted to invite folks to connect with you. If they need an accountability partner is in their, in their financial situation, if they're interested in coming and joining your academy, to breakthrough millionaire or if they want you to come speak they're trying to get a copy of your book and i want to do is it okay if we do a giveaway yes absolutely okay Okay. yes tell me tell me how they can get a hold of you all right so i have two books as a matter of fact i'll give away a copy of each of them the first book is called i divorced my money and married my mindset the second book is go after yourself finding faith fortune and fulfillment Now, you can find those on Amazon under Dr. Tabitha Russell, but I would love to give away them. Uh, Also, if you're interested in the Breakthrough Millionaires Academy, I do offer a free assessment, meaning that we sit down, we carve out time, and we talk whether or not we can 
work together, meaning that invite you into the Breakthrough Millionaires Academy. That is free for us to be able to do that. And you can go to my website at drtabitharussell.com and you can schedule that free discovery session. The great thing about that is that is that it doesn't cost you anything. However, I will say coming over and spending time with us, I do have a 12-week course where we get into the nuts and bolts of how to make all of this work. And if you're really serious about it, I challenge you for a whole year in my <laughs> in my next level CEO program, where we now go from just dealing with your finances and we take and we expand out into the business realm. And we do that for a year. So we have multiple ways that we can work together. I love it. I see some challenge accepted in the chat. That's what I'm yes. talking about. <laughs> I love the MSE listeners. And we're going to get this thing going. Uh, Daryl says, I'm hoping in the future, Dr. Tabitha will be come back on the show to see how we progressed with our budgets. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. So this is what we're going to do. In order to get a copy of, so I actually want to give away one of each book. Mm -hmm. And this is how you're going to get the book. Okay. Are y'all ready? Okay. All right. So this is what you're going to do. Dr. Tabitha talked about the 50, 30, 10, 10 rule. I want you in the chat to put in what the categories were for the 50, what's the category for the 30, and what's the category for the 10 and the 10. Okay. So go ahead and do that in the chat. Ronnie, who was my awesome moderator, she's going to tell me the, the top two people who have gotten it right. In the meantime, so if the show before this, um, Richard Adams, he is the CEO of MSC, and he was on the show. He did the show before, before this one. He was giving his Rich Live Nuggets, and he talked about power, he talked about taking your power back, and I think I know a little bit of something that's coming in the future that has the word power in it. Can you tell can you tell me what's happening in August? Yes, I am hosting the Powerful On Purpose Summit here in Columbia, South Carolina. It's going to be held August the 26th. I am bringing in speakers, powerhouses from around the country that's going to be empowering, inspiring and dropping gems all day long. We are going to really do things um, differently, meaning that this is going to be, let's um, sit down, come to the table, and let's now uh, learn some things. So I'm excited about it. Uh, Dr. Marcia will be in the house. I am woo, so woo, woo. excited. She will be one of my keynote speakers. So this is going to be such an exciting event, but powerful on purpose in Columbia, South Carolina. You can also find that on my website as well. And if you are interested in participating, you can also um, hit me up on all social media platforms at I am Dr. Tabitha. Awesome. Powerful on purpose. Take back your power. Be intentional. Be, uh, be unapologetic in your quest for what's next in your life and even be a breakthrough millionaire. So I'm still waiting in the chat. I'm waiting for the categories for the 50, 30, 10, 10. Okay. So one of the things, um, oh, I always, I want to ask you, okay. When you hear the words up, sis, up, what does that mean to you? from a financial literacy wellness perspective? That means get up from where you are and do something about your situation. Meaning that if you don't like where you are, and some people do, but if you find yourself challenged in that area, you can do something about it. The same way we can change our physical appearance if we don't like it. We can do the same thing with our finances. And we can do it with excellence. And so up says, up says that you can get up from here and you can go forward. So I love it. I love it. And the sky is the limit when I hear up says up, like who's stopping you? What's stopping you? Nothing. 
at this point, but right, I, will and I, determination. <laughs> I'm here. Ain't no stopping us now. Yes, right? yes I love because it. Going up. We are going up. We are going That's up. Right. <laughs> all right. All right. We got, we, I think we got one person. We got, we got one response in the okay. chat that, that looks like it could, it could be right. We uh-huh, need one more person. Uh-huh. Come on. Come on. Okay. Come on. Come on, come on. All right, let's <laughs> let's, let's clap it up for them. Y'all can do this. Come on. Come yes, on, let's go. On. Let's go. Let's go. All right, up, sis, up. All yes, right. I love it. Yes, love and Ronnie, she said, I divorced my money and I married my mindset. Yes, mm. yes. Your voice. Yes. Now tell me, as we're waiting for that, that second person to come in, mm-hmm. for that, that title, I divorced my money and married my mindset. Mm-hmm. There's a story mm-hmm. behind that. <laughs> it has to be. Okay. So I want you to share with us just a little snippet of what that, how did you come up with that title? So I've been an all a entrepreneur for many years. And for a long time, I was out here chasing the money, meaning that if I had a bad day, I had a bad day all around, meaning that if I didn't make my goal for that day in money, that it was a bad day as far as I was concerned. And I realized that as long as I was chasing the money, that I was not really walking in my true purpose. And so as I started to get more clear on what my purpose was, which is to serve people in all of my businesses is a service uh, based industry of uh, base uh, businesses. And so with that, I learned that um, my mindset had to change, that it was not about the money, meaning that money becomes a byproduct of the services that I give. And if I give excellent service, if I give quality service, now I can expect to reap a harvest, but I can't reap a harvest if I show up halfway. And so I learned that I had to get me together and make sure that I'm doing the right things in the way of serving others. And so I had to get my mindset shifted and changed in some ways. And as I started serving people to the fullest, going above and beyond whenever I can, now the money comes effortlessly. Mm-hmm. So that's where I divorced my money and married my mindset came from. It's just Got really it. shifting my mindset about not just chasing the dollars because a lot of times you get a little desperate and you you can trip and fall by doing that because you take uncalculated risk. Mm. And so with that, my mindset around that shifted as well. Got it. I love it. Thank you for sharing that. So we have one winner, but I want I, there's two books. Okay. okay. So yes. I need somebody in the chat to copy the answer. This is, you can cheat. Okay. I'm giving <laughs> you permission to cheat. Okay. Copy the answer. Whoever copies Dr. Tanya's answer into the chat, we, you're going to get the other book because we're, we're here to serve. We're here to be a blessing. And I want to get that second book in somebody's hand. Okay. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Yes. So yes. let's go. And so in a second, once I get this answer, we're going to sign out. And then DJ Rich, he's going to, he's going to take us, he's going to throw in some music and we're going to party our way out of here because yes. we have taken our power back from a financial perspective. We we are we are going in the gym. We're lifting some some weights. We're going we're going to be on a treadmill, right? We're going to be we're going to be fluid. We're going to allow the budget to change. We're going to get accountability. We're going to have awareness. And by doing so, we are going to be better from a financial perspective. We're going to be financially literate. And that's how we're going to We're going to add some stuff. We're going to subtract some stuff. We're going to multiply some stuff and we're going to divide some stuff as we multiply our way to our millions. So I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Come on, chat. I am waiting for that (laughs) second person. So Dr. Tanya, you got a book. I got, I got a book for you. We're just trying to find that other person. All right. Because in a second, I'm about to give it. I'm going, you know what? 
Mm-hmm. So we had a couple of questions in the chat. I'm going to okay. give one of the books to Nikki. Awesome. Okay. So in order yes. to get your book, you you need to register with the MSC network. So Ronnie, if you could put the link in, if you are new to the station, first of all, welcome to the show. Welcome to Tuesday nights. It's a power pack with Rich Live at seven with and ups is up at eight o'clock. Go ahead. Oh, T- oh, Tiffany comes in. She comes in too. So you know what? I'm going. Is, is it okay if we give another book away? Yes, absolutely. Okay. All right. Let's give. Uh, okay. So we're going to give it to Tiffany. Tiffany is going to get the um a second book. Let's let's give it. The, the, I like I like the F one. Okay, mm-hmm. that one has a little ring. <laughs> it's got a little ring to it. Let's give it. Let's give it to Tiffany. Okay. All right. And as we get out of here, I want to, Dr. Tabitha, can you give us some closing thoughts on maybe there's, uh, uh, I'm going to call it a, a Dr. Tabitha ism that something that you live by that you would, that you want us to, to take away as the, the last, the last word. I will say that whatever plan that you have, whatever idea and vision that you have for your life, that you say that I am going to accomplish this no matter what, my simple thought around that is keep going. Only you can limit you. Only you can stop the course of that taking place. So I will say, keep your eye on creating a rich legacy. That does not always mean money, but if you create a rich mindset, if you create healthy conversations, you create openness to discuss whatever it is, then you can create the life that you want. So don't limit yourself and keep going. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you, Dr. Tabitha, for being here. We are definitely going to have you come back. There was a a suggestion that you come and check us out and see how we're doing with our budgets. I look forward to seeing you next time. And I also look forward to seeing you in August at your Powerful On Purpose Summit. Take care. Yes, thank you. Have a good day, everyone. Take care. Thank you so much. And so this is Dr. Marcia. This has been the Up Sis Up show here on the MSE Network where we are rising up. This is where we are speaking up and we are bossing up both in our finances, in our life, in leadership, in all of the areas. So meet us back here every week. In June, we're talking about financial success, financial wellness, but come back every week here on the Upsys Up Network. I am Dr. Marcia and I'm your master destiny life coach. And I help women who are trapped in their personal prison. I help them to break out. I help them to decide who they are, discover what they want, and then to deliver on their destiny. So DJ Rich, take us out. And see you next week. Take care.